Hey there guys, it's Ozzy Grimm with the Gamers Grimm, and we are back in Starfield today on the Moon of Kurtz to debut another one of my custom vanilla builds. Um, today we are going to go over the Subjugator. Uh, I really wanted to take advantage of the Dimos parts and make like a Imperial themed bounty hunting ship with some really sort of cool aesthetics to them. Um, and I think I managed it. It went through a couple of iterations uh, trying to really take advantage of the Dimos parts and uh, make it look really, really dark and sort of menacing. Um, it is, of course, a vanilla ship. It's Class B. So you only need Class B parts to build the Subjugator. Um, and always remember, guys, to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Uh, we really do enjoy building these ships and doing custom builds across all the games that we play so that we can share them with you guys. But anyway, let's get back to the Subjugator. It is, again, a Class B ship, and it uses mostly Dimos and uh, Tayo parts. Though there are a few basic Nova Galactic parts uh, as, as part of this build as well. Um, and so I really wanted to make a bounty hunter, Imperial bounty hunter themed ship. But uh, what we'll do is we will head inside and we will look at the layout. Ready to lift off when you are, Captain. But we will come up in this rear companion way. There is one ladder in this entire ship. Um, but here on the lower deck, we have a forward. We have a computer banks or control station. I can't remember which one is which by just looking at it. Um, but this is where I have the uh, docker that goes down right there in the middle. But if we head to the starboard side, we will see the crew quarters, which is a relatively... Uh, robust if utilitarian by its nature which I thought was really fitting for an imperial bounty hunting ship but it has everything you need and a forward of the Tayo living quarters is of course a workshop adjacent to the crew quarters here but where this really kind of gets fun from a role-playing standpoint is if we head over to the port side we will find that we have a two by two brig, which is laid out in a relatively interesting way. Um, one of the things I like about it is not only do you have this brig here, but there is, uh, of course, a guard station right here. And uh, going back into that is an armory. And the Tayo and Hope Tech armories come with uh, an additional cell, but I don't think of this as a cell. I think of this as like guards' quarters for the people who would be guarding uh, the prisoners uh, with this door here closed. Uh, so the layout really kind of worked out in my favor. I really wish these little weird bugs would go away. There's a red line in this ship. I have a coffee cup stain in another ship. It's really kind of annoying, but it is Bethesda and there will always be bugs. But we will head up to the second deck of course, the second deck really is just a companionway that goes into a computer stations and uh, heads up and into the cockpit. So we will go ahead and uh, hop in the chair and take off so that you can see the subjugator in flight. I know I say this about every ship that I build, but this was a really fun ship to build. Uh, some of the Dimos parts can be a little tricky to, to really use with any of the other styles of uh, ship parts because uh, they're very militarized and very utilitarian. And it can, you, can, you can really overuse them, I think, and, and it ends up making the ends up just making the build look even more ugly uh, <laughs> in the long run. But we will we'll pop into the uh, photo mode so you guys can take a look at uh, the Subjugator in space. 
really uh, a lot of fun to build this and try to find unique ways to make those winglets work. I didn't want to... Uh, what happens so many times with Dymos parts is, like, those winglets that you see there, uh, they tend to end up all on the same plane uh, or same profile line of the ship. So I really wanted to to break that up and uh, create a way to use the Dymos cockpit as an overhead cockpit, which if anybody who's built with Dymo par Dymos parts will tell you, it's really hard to to get some of these cockpits to, to go over anything. The game really wants you to have them just out front in front of everything. So I found a way to sort of clip all the parts together and uh, was able to make an overhead Dymos cockpit uh, and not overuse, uh, I think, the, uh, the, the parts of from Dymos. Uh, one of the things that is the least vanilla aspect um, is the way that I did the engines. I did uh, one of the little snapping tricks that you can do uh, so that it looks like you only have three engines when in reality you have four engines. So you can have your maximum engines but in a smaller profile because I really wanted to hide uh, those, those engines under that uh, silhouette there that you see just like that. And uh, I think it really turned out uh, really well in the long run and it created a really fun sort of bounty hunting ship. So... But that's all a moot point now because uh, we'll probably switch over to the ship builder and I will show you guys how you can make your very own Imperial Subjugator ship. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back here in the ship builder and I've got uh, the Subjugator pulled apart, uh, generally speaking. And uh, we're going to go over the general layout and uh, the parts that you'll need to build this ship. So here at the core, we have the HABs. Um, I always start with uh, the, the companionway or the HAB that I'm going to attach my bay to. And in this case, it is a Hope Tech companionway. Um, and it has a 120LD landing bay that goes up into that and then directly to the right and the left, or starboard and port, I have two Tayo storm uh, storerooms, one by one, top Bs. You need to keep that in mind uh, because some of these don't have side passages, and some of them do, um, and that's because you need the snap points. So keep that in mind. Um, and forward of that, we're going to have a Tayo computer core, two by one, top A. And then this is the case where we will take one that is uh, a single top. It doesn't have any of the sides like you see on th these ones here. Um, and that's to prevent anything from, uh, any doors from going where we don't want those doors to go. Um, and of course, to the left and the right of that, going through each of these companionways are the Tayo 2x2 two two top A's. Again, no side snap points on these. Um, so, but this one is a berth, and this one is the brig. Um, you can f move those however you want, or make them whatever you want. I just happen to like this sort of layout and hab design because this is a imperial bounty hunter ship, as uh, as, I, as I see it. But forward of that, we do have two Tayo two by one top Bs. These are the ones with the snap points because we're going to need those snap points. Um, and then on top of the Hope Tech, we're going to put a, another Tayo companionway. Again, one with the sides, so it's a top B, so that it has snap points for us to take advantage of. And then, of course, now we have another Tayo control station that we're going to put right there on top of that. So that way we can prevent any ladders or stairs from going where we don't want them. So underneath, we will put uh, four of these uh, 320 CB landing gears from Dymos, and they will be arranged just like you see here. Um, and underneath this uh, front part of this computer core, 
we have our 100 DP slim docker from Dimos. And uh, we'll go ahead and attach these Demos Skegs uh, bees that go in between uh, our, our landing gears. And then we're going to put these Skeg A's uh, in front of our landing gear because it's nice and decorative. Um, so back here we have our uh, reactor and grav drives. I have a 104 DS mag inertial reactor that will go under the port companionway. And then I have a SGD 2300 grav drive that will go under the storeroom or companionway on the starboard side like so. Um, and this is sort of why we want these ones here is we want these really interesting snap points. We're going to snap a bunch of these Demos wings along the inside uh, of these two uh, uh, two by ones to give us a really cool uh, sort of overhead effect, which also will allow us to attach our um, Demos cockpit and make it look like it's an overhead cockpit. Um, but in front of all of this, we are going to attach a Nova Cowling 2LSF with the Demos Wing A port, and we will attach that directly to the front, like so. And it is mirrored on this side as well, like that. And that gives us that really interesting silhouette, which allows us to attach a Phobos cockpit and make it sort of appear as though it's an overheaded cockpit, which is what I really like about that. Um, so we can go ahead and throw some Stroud nose caps on here like this. Um, I like the nose caps because, uh, rather than the braking engines um, because, I, first of all, I kind of think of this as a stealth ship. But you'll see here in a little bit that these Stroud nose caps have like a, a gray strip that really sort of matches uh, what we are doing. Um, so we'll go back here for a minute and we'll go ahead and throw our cargo uh, here as well. And I do believe that the cargo, uh, does it go like this? No, I believe it goes like this. It will go right behind our uh, grav drive and our uh, reactors like so. And these are two 30T cargo, collar cargo holds. I'd have to say this is the weakest part of the ship is it just doesn't have a great deal of cargo, but using class B parts, you kind of sacrifice some of your cargo space. But we will take our uh, fuel tanks and put them right in the middle between those two cargo holds. And that is the 500T Helium-3 tank um, from Ballistic Solutions. Very good tank. Uh, very useful because we really, really like all the snap points that come with it. Um, <clears throat> so we'll go into the uh, major wing assemblies that you see here. And you're going to need one, two, three, four of these uh, Nova Callings. And of course, they just transform into uh, the centerpieces that you want. Um, they have to be arranged like this so that we can make uh, these wings work. Because the really the beautiful part about this uh, assembly is it only snaps in the one place, uh, like so. I believe that's how we do it. Uh, we will see if it goes where it's supposed to when the time is right. We may be a little bit forward. I think maybe it's the second one that you snap it to like that. Yeah, that's the one. And that's why you do this because this is the only point that this entire assembly is going to snap to the ship. So you have to have this arranged just like this so you can have this really nice sweeping sort of wing assembly that you see here. And they will snap to the side of your reactor and your grav drive like that. Um, I do have some weapon mounts uh, that I put on the sides like this. I happen to just like the idea of bounty hunter ships having missiles on them. And, uh, and under here I have four of these Vanguard obliterators 
but if you pick up a weapon you will see that there is more than enough snap points uh, on this ship to add whatever weapons load out that you really really would like um, so we'll go ahead and start putting on these demos spines um, and there's just two of these demo spines a's uh, one is fore and one is aft and that's where i like that that sort of gray strip it flows uh, with those spines like that um, so it has a continuation of the color from the ship um, and then along the top we will have a uh, I do believe the way I've got this is I, I deleted a lot of these because I just didn't want them all of them on there because you can do this as well just like so and this is how you will uh, do these just to sort of add some decoration to your ship and then there will be one up here but uh, we'll get to that here in a minute because we're going to do this uh, engine assembly here in the back uh, I think the way I did this was I sort of snuck this in we'll do that later we'll mess with that later because now we're gonna do this really cool engine uh, cowling design and what you're gonna have is uh, Stroud cap A's on the bottom like this and then you're going to take uh, another Nova cowling 2LSF and attach that to a Stroud cap A and you're going to attach it that's why we don't have that one there that's what I thought we need to delete that because that snaps to the side just like you see there and that is mirrored here as well on this side and then what you're going to have here is a nova galactic cowling that snaps to your gas tanks like that and then over the top of that you're going to have some more a nova galactic cowling i have one that's flipped up and then another one behind it just like that and this is where i snuck in my shield right on top of that just like there and then what we will have is some of these wings but we need our engines in first and these are Dunn 71 engines um, from Eamon Dunn and you're gonna have one that you put there and then you're gonna have one that you put there and then I do believe I need to take this off to make it work and you will snap the third one there and then the fourth one will go there but what you're really going to do is you're going to really quickly nope that did not work either i'm not exactly sure how i did this the last time we'll go through it but what we want to do is we want to whoops did not mean to delete that we're going to want to uh basically put one up there and then nope that ain't working either maybe this is how i did it yeah there we did and now we snap it again and then remove the one that we we uh duplicated and then put our uh, little cool cowling here and that is how you get uh two engines to occupy uh, the same space on your ship so that you can you to make it look like you only have three engines when in reality you have four here but the last thing we'll do is we'll take some of these Demos wings like this and we will attach them to the sides just like so. And there you go. That is the Subjugator. And again, if you pull off any weapon, there is so many weapon slots uh, <laughs> that you should have no problem trying to figure out how to uh, arm this, uh, this ship. Initially, I wanted to call the ship the Arsenal, and it was just crazy how many different weapons that you could attach to it. And, uh, but I wanted to make a bounty hunter ship, so I went with missiles and uh, some cannon turrets and see some... Vanguard obliterator audio projectors uh, but you could go with any weapons that you want 
Um, but that is the subjugator, guys. It's really not that hard of a build. Um, you get most of these parts from Demos and Tayo. So you will have to make a trip to the Soul System for uh, some of your Tayo parts, or for your Demos parts, excuse me, and make your way to uh, Neon for your uh, Tayo parts. Uh, and I do believe you can get these Amon Duns on Neon as well, though I could be wrong about that in the video. But that is the Subjugator, guys. I hope you uh, have a lot of fun building this ship. And uh, I can say this. This is the ship that made me wish that there was multiplayer in Starfield because I feel like this ship would be a super fun ship to fly around with your friends and uh, actually collect bounties. It would be really cool to uh, be able to do that. But unfortunately, we have to play uh, by ourselves. So, and, and add a little bit of that. But it doesn't matter. You can decorate the ridges however you want. You can even completely remove them. But that was the Subjugator, guys. Let's not uh, get too deep into this. Uh, I really enjoyed building this ship. I hope you enjoy building it. And uh, we will see you next time on the Gamers Grim.